Okay, today, module four, lesson 27. Our objective is to be able to solve word problems involving dividing a unit fraction by a whole number and dividing a whole number by a unit fraction. So tomorrow we're gonna to be splitting up into our groups of two and you're gonna be solving a problem. Then you're gonna be evaluating how other people solve the problem. Now, I sure hope, you know, we've done this a lot. And during our last test, hardly anybody drew type diagrams. Now, what we're doing tomorrow is meant for you to practice the same strategies when you're taking your test, okay? So we're gonna try it again tomorrow with Miss Gray. Okay, so the standard apply and extend previous understands division divide unit fractions by whole numbers and whole numbers by unit fractions. And we're gonna put this in a real world situation today, which are word problems. So let's get started. Here we have Miss Silverstein bought three mini cakes for a birthday party. She cuts each cake into quarters and plans to serve each guest one quarter of a cake. How many guests can she serve with all her cakes? So even with our rubric, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and we're going to saw, we're gonna see what the relevant information is in the, in the problem. So Miss Silverman bought three mini cakes for the birthday party. She cuts each cake into quarters and plans to serve each guest one quarter of a cake. How many guests can she serve? So this is the question we're looking to see. How many guests can she serve? Okay, so let's, now let's go to our tape diagram. And we know the total on top is the total amount of cakes she has. And she has three mini cakes. Now, so we're going to split this up into three mini cakes to start off with. Now, it says she plans to cut each cake into quarters. So each one of these cakes, we're going to split into quarters. There's half and a quarter. This one's a half and a quarter. This one's a half and another quarter. Now she plans on giving each person one of these pieces. So she wants to know what the total amount of people. Well, we can see here, we got one, two, three, four, and these are quarters. So that's one quarter, two quarters, three quarters, four quarters, five quarters, six quarters, seven quarters, eight quarters, nine quarters, 10 quarters, 11 quarters, and 12 quarters. So we can see she can give it to 12 guests, okay? Now that's where we're using the tape diagram. Now let's see if we can support this with a with a numerical word um, problem. Said we had three mini cakes, wanted to divide those mini cakes into quarters, to see how many we'll have. Well, we're dividing a fraction, so we want to turn this to whole numbers. So we know this is actually four over one when I invert it, and then I got to change it to a multiplication times three, which we know that equals three times four over one, which equals 12 pieces. And that means we can have 12 guests, okay? So we can say that Miss Silverstein or Silverstein can serve 12 guests. All right. On the next one, Mr. Fom has a quarter pan of lasagna left in his refrigerator. He cuts the lasagna in equal pieces so he can have it for dinner for three nights. How much lasagna can he have for each night? Okay, so let's get our highlighter. I'm coming up here, and I know he has a quarter pan of lasagna. He wants to cut lasagna into equal slices so he can have it for three nights. So equal slices 
for three nights. How much lasagna will he have to eat each night? Well, now let's go ahead and do our tape diagram. Now we're talking about a quarter pan. So I have to start off first with one pan. Then I'm going to split it into halves and then quarters. Now we're dealing with this one quarter pan right here. Now do you want to split this pan up for three nights? So we want to know how much this piece will be for each night. How much of the pan? Well, in order to solve that, we've got to split the rest of the pan, which have been three quarters of a pan, into thirds, so we can find out what our denominator would be. Now we can see that it would be one out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So each night he'd add one twelfth pan of pizza per night. Now let's double check ourselves. I have one quarter pan, let me do it over here. And I want to divide that up into three nights. So I'm going to rewrite that whole number as a fraction, which means I put it as three over one, because still equals three. Then I'm, since it's the division of a fraction, I want to change that to multiplication, so I have to invert it. And since I invert it, I have to change the opposite oper operation in one fourth. And I know one fourth times one third equals one twelfth. So it checked. All right, let's, so let's start by highlighting information. You know, the perimeter, which is the sum of all sides of a square, which means all sides are equal, is one fifth of a meter. Find the length of each side in meters. All right, so we're starting off. And we're talking about one fifth of a meter. So I'm going to go ahead and put a whole meter up here. That's one meter. And there's one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. Now we know that this part right here is one fifth of a meter. Now, that one-fifth of the meter, since the square has four sides, is divided into fourths. So, we want to find out what the size of each one of those sides are. Well, we know the numerator would be one, because that's one side. In order to find the denominator, i got to split up the rest of these fifths. So, this one here would be half fourth splitting this one into fourth this one into fourth and this one into fourth so now I can see there's four in each each fifth so if I counted them up that's one two three four five six seven eight 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So each one would be 1 20th of a meter long. Now let's see what this would look like just numerically. So we know that we had 1 -fifth of a meter divided by four sides. And we're going to rewrite that to one-fifth divided by four over one. Now we're going to change it to a multiplication. We're going to skip, flip, and multiply. So we're going to change one, uh, four ones to one-fourth. 
Then since we went to the inverse, we have to change the opposite operation. In fifth, one fifth times one fourth is one twentieth. So that works. So we know the part of this one here, it would be one twentieth. Now I want you to know how long each side in centimeters. Well, if you remember, King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. We are on the unit, which is here is meters right here. We're wanting to go to centimeters, which is one, two positions away. And we're going in the direction of the arrow. So 20 meters with my decimal point right here goes one, two. That would end up being two, one, one tenth, one twentieth of a meter is 20,000 centimeters or 2,000 centimeters, I'm sorry. All right. Okay, let's get our highlighter. It says a pallet is holding five crates, and the total amount is one quarter ton. Wants to know how many tons each crate weighs. Well, since it wants to know how many tons can be a quarter ton, so the total on top is going to be one ton. Now we know that the pallet only weighed a quarter ton. Now this quarter ton was split to five different crates. So let's go ahead and split it into five crates. There's one, my pen is acting up, two, three, four, five. And we want to know how much each one of these pallets weighs. Well, in order to do that, we've got to take the rest of these, these quarter tons and we've got to split them to fifths. There's one, two, three, four, five. There's one, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five. Now we know each pallet is going to be a numerator of one. Then we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So that would be one twentieth ton. So each crate or each pallet, I'm sorry. No, it was crates. Each crate weighs one twentieth of a ton. Now, the second part of this question is how many pounds does each crate weigh? Well, if you remember how we did this before, we're going to start off by saying one half ton equals one half times one ton. Now, if you look on your conversion chart, you'll see that one ton is equal to 2,000 pounds. So I'm going to go 2,000 pounds times one half. And that's going to equal 2,000 pounds over two. So that means each one weighed 1,000 pounds. Okay, here we have a two-step problem. So let's get our highlight here, and let's take a look at the first one. It says she has five pieces of ribbon, each one yard long, and she wants to cut them to six. She wants to know how many six she will have. All right. So here we can see that we have one yard. And they're cutting up, they're cut up into five pieces of ribbon. Now, it says each one of these ribbons is cut into six. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. One, 
two, three, four, five, and six, two, three, four, five, and six, and one, two, three, four, five, and six. So I can see right here that each one was cut into six pieces. And this one was cut into six, and this one was cut into six, and this one's cut into six, and this one's cut into six. Okay? So we can see that five pieces of ribbon, each one cut into six pieces, so it's times six is 30 pieces. So she had 30 six after cutting the ribbon. Now it wants to know how long each of the six will be. Well, you can see this, piece, this one six right here, it's actually of the whole, it'll be one one thirtieth, because it's 36. So one thirtieth of one yard. So that means one thirtieth times one yard would be one thirtieth of a yard. Now, we need to know how many inches because it's looking for inches. Well, we know there's three feet a yard, 12 inches and one foot, so it'd be 36 inches. So we know this is one thirtieth of 36 inches, which means 1 30th times 36, which equals 36 over 1, should be 36 over 30, which now means this would be 1 and 6 30th inches. So one and six thirtieth inches. I know this is two times three and 10 times three for 30 gives me two tenths, which I can still even do that even further. Two tenths, which equals two times one over two times five. So that would be each one would be one and one fifth inches long. Okay, so there were some examples there. Um, what you know, we're, I'm expecting when you do these word problems tomorrow, you're going to be teamed up. I'm going to have Miss Gray have specific people together unless somebody's absent, okay? Because I won't be there tomorrow. But Miss Gray has done this process before, but I expect y'all to do the process. It's very important you do your notes. Now, if you come in there tomorrow and you don't have your notes, you're still going to have to do the word problems, okay? You're just going to get a zero on the notes until you get it done. Okay, because you're not going to have time in class to do it tomorrow because you have to walk in. You're going to be straight with word problems. Okay. All right. Y'all have a good day. And uh, I expect y'all to act appropriately tomorrow. And I'm sure you'll treat Miss Gray very well. I'll be very proud of you. All right. Have a good day. Bye bye.